Hey guys, Cressup here. Thanks very much for checking out this video with Alexandra Boyd, aka the voice of Elaine Marley in quite a few of the Monkey Island games. Um, if you want to check out any of my other gaming interviews with LucasArts icons, uh, there's Dominic Armato, Ron Gilbert, Dave Grossman. Be sure to check out all those. And if you do want to join in on these live Q&As that I do, check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Cressup, so you can ask your own questions as well. I, I normally post on there when I'm going to be doing these things. I post on my Twitter, Cress Up, when that's all happening. So do feel free to jump into Twitch. If I'm not doing these gaming interviews, I'm playing adventure games anyway. There's been Gabriel Knight 2, Phantasmagoria. I've been playing lots of good adventure games recently. But let's get into it. Let's get into this chat with Alexandra Boyd, aka the voice of Elaine Marley. Do let me know what you think about uh, everything she says in the comments below and give it a like. <laughs> So I'm very excited uh, to be speaking now to Alexandra Boyd, uh, who, of course, provided the voice of Elaine Marley for most of the Monkey Island uh, series. Uh, and uh, she's, of course, also a writer and director. She's uh, directed uh, a film that we're going to be talking a little bit about to do with the supporting cast members of the film Titanic, a, a little known film. You might have heard of it. Um, yeah, but I'm really, really excited to chat to you, Alexandra. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. It's there's there's been this rather charming resurgence of people, um, you know, wanting to talk about Monkey Island. I think it's it's a little bit like Titanic in its perennial its perennialnessness. Yes, if that's a word. Is that um, you know, uh, over the years I have been um, approached or surprised. I have surprised people, young men usually of a certain age. They're now in their forties. But over time, they were like, oh, you're the voice of Elaine Marley. I can't speak to you now. <laughs> but I had a crush on you when I was 11. <laughs> and yeah, everything and, and everything in between, really. And, and one thing that's uh, also come out of um, uh, bringing to light uh, Titanic stories, the untold stories of the supporting actors and fans of Titanic, is that um, everybody is so charming yeah. and so sincere and you know i have a friend who says you know fan is just short for fanatic but <laughs> what a, what fabulous things to be obsessed and passionate and fanatical about you know there are far worse things yeah yeah i agree <laughs> i've got know, to agree with that know. so so as the receiver of that sincerity it's always always charming so I'm charmed to be here. Excellent. Lovely. I'm glad to hear it. We're charmed to have you. So thank you so much. Um, I will get around to it. Uh, I've seen The Ship of Dreams. I uh, definitely want to speak about that and just all, all the stuff related to that. We'll kick off, though, with, with talking a little bit about playing um, Elaine. And I, I want to know, uh, how did you come to audition for the role? Well, it's it's a lot like any of these things that start off as just a job. And I was living in Los Angeles. I actually lived there for 10 years. And my bread and butter was television, TV commercials. And I was quite successful at that when back in the day when you could sort of make uh, little chunks of money from every time your ad was shown on the television, you got a $50, you know, or something, depending on when and where. And, um, and so I was, and, and also being British, living in the states i very often was asked to do an american accent but sometimes they'd be like but why don't you just be english we'll just make her english right yeah it happened in mr holland's opus um the character was of, of course written as an american but they would they were just like well english people get everywhere as we do and so <laughs> just be english so i'm not quite sure if that's what happened with elaine marley but um dara o'farrell was the director then was holding auditions and I auditioned and I auditioned for several things for him. There were often, you know, LucasArts were doing um, Star Wars uh, games. I had to match Emma Thompson's voice one time, you know, it was very emphatic, you know, that sort of thing. I got, oh, right, I yeah. got you know, so there were, there were all sorts of very odd one-off jobs that I got and Monkey Island was a one-off job. And then it was another a second off job. Yeah. <laughs> and then I moved back to um, England in 2006 about. 
and they announced they were going to go back to the beginning Yes. When and and voice, you know, when they had little speech bubbles and everything, they were like two dimensional pixelated, you know, little Egyptian characters. And so they wrote the script for us. And I went into a um, a recording studio in London, which was back in the day before Zooms. Can you imagine? Oh, they had to patch us through from 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 San Francisco, Palo Alto, wherever the director was. And we I singularly on my own because you never meet the other actors you'll we'll no of work. course yeah it's, odd. it's it's I mean it works it works but it's very odd I've never met Dominic Armato I was going to ask I've, you yeah no 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 no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> we need and, to make uh, that happen <laughs> but yes, a reunion um and that would be a feat of of some size yeah but yes um, but I went into this, uh, into the studio and um, re re-recorded. I don't know if it was re-recorded the whole lot, all the way back up to the present day. But that was about ten years ago. That yeah, ten years easily, ten, twelve years ago. Oh yeah. wow! Okay, um, yeah, I, yeah, because I was going to ask if you if you had uh, if you had met him, but I I because I know when I yeah. I have spoken to him and he you know he said the same and in, in that he can't. It's all recorded, uh, and, and any any uh, cartoon animation voiceover you do, rarely, even with big name actors, you see them when they're in the booth. They film them in the booth. It's just them. Yeah, it's rarely, rarely do you have a conversation with the person, and the and the way they get around it, I think, is. Um, and I like to do this anyway, is that it will be, you know, there'll be short lines. You're not having these long, you know, Shakespearean monologues in these games because they're usually answers or steps to the next step or whatever, as I understand. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I will do is I'll say, right, well, here's the line and I'll just do it for you three different ways. Yeah. So so when they get to sit down and they're putting all the jigsaw piece, pieces together, they they can choose one of the three ways you did it and that kind of covers them they love that they love that oh yes yes and it's also easy for me to do i don't know think let's think of a line oh guybrush what are you doing oh guybrush what are you doing oh guybrush what are you doing you know and then they can just right so it's 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 clearly not impossible because it's how they do it I'm interested when you when you sort of audition for it. Um, were were you aware of Monkey Island at all? Did you have any idea about the, the fandom no. and all that? <laughs> no. No. In fact, in fact, they sent me the CD-ROM yeah. of the game, the first game, and I put it in, and I barely, I didn't get off the first island. I was useless. <laughs> I can't be, I'm too old, and this was 25 years ago. Even 25 years ago, I was too too old to learn how to play it. Okay. Look, you're never yeah. too old. You never. Too... <laughs> um, can you remember the audition at all? Like, did you? Did, what did you have to do, or who was there? Well, it wasn't a very big part at the beginning, yeah. was it? Because no. it turned into a golden statue. Yeah. That was the other thing. I was not prepared to go through all the steps to see when I got released from the statue again. Yeah. I was just, I just knew I was never going to make it. Um, you know, and and all, almost all auditions, except my Titanic audition, which I could tell you about Ooh, later. Please do. Is that um, they they just give you a bit of the script and you just read a bit of the script. Yeah. And I and I bet you I probably started off doing her American and then they were like, oh, you're English. Have a go with an English accent. And that was that. And then the second episode or the second episode in after that one, they either were too lazy to find me again and they cast another actor. But apparently I heard there was a bit of a bit of a shakedown. Like, where's Alexandra? She's not American. She's English and we want her back. So for the third iteration, <laughs> I got I got invited back. I was going to ask about that. I was gonna because yeah. I think it I think it's Charity James who, yeah, in Escape from Monkey Island, the, the one it's afterwards. It's random. It's so random. Were you and... were you asked to 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 play it again or what happened? Did you just find out no, they they'd cast just someone else? About me. No, they just forgot about me. And then there was a bit of I I imagine, because again, I'm not on the inner no. circle. There was yeah. a bit of an uproar. There was a bit of a, a, a mini a mini uproar and <laughs> um, they found me for the next one. You're That's like, well, I'm back. I'm back now. That's so yeah. funny. Uh, yeah. I, because it is also at the time, at yeah. the time in my third, well, in my twenties and thirties and forties, as long as I could hold on to it, I had bright red curly hair. That, yeah. that you know, I've, 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 I've embraced the silver now. Yeah. But um, 
I, I, what they, and then you look at the character and she's this little feisty, red headed pirate. And that yeah. was rather charming. I thought that was, and they, they do that a lot way back in the Disney days. They would film the voice actors and, you know, for, for, mo for their motion, like yeah. early, early motion capture so that the animators could put in the physical the physical actions yes. that, you know, because actors, most actors aren't just voice actors. There are some that are, um, but all of us have a physicality that we put to a character, which I think is fun for them to blend into the animation. Well, I, I mean, especially in, in the, in the one, the first one you're in curse, she, she whacks him in the, in the face. She gives a, a yeah. big punch eventually when she gets unstatued. Um, <laughs> and I, I guess as well, because it's this, it's sort of the first time, because obviously the first two games, there was no speaking in them. Obviously, there's been a remaster now where they've added voices. But um, it was the first time really for fans to hear what the characters sounded like. So I don't know if that, I mean, it, it might not have, but it, I don't know if that played on, on your mind at all. Just that voice of a character that's never been voiced before. And, and how did you get into playing her? No, I didn't because I all I really had was the script. Yeah. And I had, you know... This is going to sound terribly aggrandizing, self aggrandizing but you you'd have to honor what they've written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and if it's well written, a lot of that work is done for you. Um, so I was leaning into the script, and then Dara, who clearly had been along since the beginning, or you know, far longer than I, the the director, they're able to guide you. No, no, no. Can you make her a bit more like this? Or no, in this situation, she'd be a bit more like that. And then, you know. You just, and then yeah. you go, cheers, thanks a lot. And you get your car and you go. <laughs> Can you remember how long it took to record the first time? Because that's, as you say, we don't actually see Elaine very much in the first game because she's turned no, into a golden it, statue. It would, been, it would have been an hour. And yeah. remember, I'm not listening to the other actors' yeah. responses. I'm just literally laying down line by line by line by line. So who else from LucasArts is is it just the sort of uh, the voice director that you've you've met at all, or have you met any of the other people from? No, no, no. it's crazy. No, it's the fact, same. Dominic um, said the same. None of us. Eve, I don't. I mean, Dominic. I don't think lives in Los Angeles anymore. I don't live in Los Angeles anymore. Yeah. We don't have to. And you know, I just directed an entire feature film over the, over COVID and the last two years, three years uh, from my studio in the middle of a forest yeah you know i i've flown places to to interview people for we can get into that but you know it's possible to as i said 10 12 years ago they patched me through to the directors from london and when i did <clears throat> uh, two summers ago i did um a monkey island and i just got on the ferry to seattle and that was brilliant because they had Ron Gilbert was on the line with us, with me and the director and a sound engineer. He's, you know, I call him the knob twiddlers. Yeah. Because they get the, <laughs> it. the knob twiddler. And um, Ron, as it turns out, at the end of the two hour session was literally a mile up the road uh. in uh, in Seattle. Ah. Uh. So he, he was just you. Were, you he heard him walked to the studio <laughs> and sat there in the studio. But he and we just never, we never clued it. To, nobody said to him, "Oh, she's in, she's in Washington," you know. And he would have gone, "Where in Washington?" Yeah, I'm in Balham. Yeah, which is a, a neighborhood of Seattle. And we it didn't turn up until we were sort of having a break, and I was, you know, and um, yeah. That's as close as it we've ever gotten to. Oh. So, so near and yet so far. Oh, we need, yeah, we, we, come on, we've got to get some kind of uh, meeting together or some kind of reunion. That'd be great. Um, I mean, you, I'm interested because, of course, you've you've played, you've, you know, had experience playing recurring characters in other things. I, I know, obviously, in Coronation Street, for example. Um, yes, but that, I, was, that was a very different experience. Yes, I bet. <laughs> I can imagine that. Being on Coron I, one of the long-time actors you know she'd been on the show for 10 years or something and I was filming my first scenes and she said when is your when's your first episode out and I said oh I think it's like March the 17th or something she went mm, fame pretty much instant and she was not wrong <laughs> I mean it literally is like uh, you go from lovely working happy to be working actor to in people's living rooms yeah it's true 
it's mad. It's, it, it is mad. Did you get people had, recognizing you quite quickly? Oh, or? on the tube. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, even your friends, because I call it the famous person's disease. Yeah. The carrier, the carrier of the virus is the famous person and they infect everybody around them. Forget COVID. They infect everybody's brain gets sucked out and all of a sudden, oh, will you come and meet my man? Uh. Oh, will you come? <laughs> everybody now knows a famous person. Yeah. Right. And they they want a little bit of you, a little bit more of you. I said, did you know that six weeks ago I was exactly the same person yes. as I am today? <laughs> it's very bizarre. It's it's very bizarre. And and people, you know, it was quite um, it was quite uh, all the characters on on Coronation Street are dynamic, but she was quite a shit stirrer. Yeah, and so it and very di- you know just out there. So it was a memorable character as well. It was a t- tremendous fun to play. I bet I can I can imagine and, it being um, good fun. And so you know it was it, it was impactful and impacted my life quite significantly. Yeah. And then it's interesting because obviously you, you've got that experience playing the recurring character there. But then Elaine keeps coming back as well. Even every time we think that sure, that Monkey yeah. Island is yeah. is ended, it's back again. I mean, was it was it difficult coming back to 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 yeah. play you again after a while? Was it quite easy to pick up? It is because I think essentially, um, sort of going back to what you were saying about what did they give you? How did you think? About it? I think she's really just a heightened version of me. <laughs> I wasn't, I was going to ask that. <laughs> yeah, you could probably ask uh, my partner, Drew. Like, he would probably listen to a few se- uh, scenes and he'd go, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you that, know. That's... Uh, she's just, uh, so, and, and again, um, you know, uh, as voice actors, because all you have is your voice, you're yeah. using your entire range and your, all your imagination. It's a fantastic job. You don't have to put your makeup on, you don't have to know the lines, you get it all done in an, two hours yeah. and you're out of it. It's really a fun job, a fun job. I've never thought about it like that, but that is a good point. You, you, you've you, got your lines there. You don't need to necessarily, yeah. No. I never thought about no. it like that, but yeah. Um, I was I also, you know, when did you, when did you hear then, because there's been so many different Monkey Island games now, but when did you hear about uh, Return coming back? Uh, the one that came out in, in 2022 was, and how, how does that work? Do you just get a, a call from somebody saying, yeah, they, we want they you again? Find, well, they have to find you because yeah. think about it. I had an agent in uh, London, but I also um, fired them when I started writing and directing. I just sort of lost interest in, you know, in pursuing acting, especially as the, the jobs I was getting offered were really pretty rubbish, like understudying people in the West End for less money than it would have, by the time I paid my taxes, my agent, and my Oyster card, yeah, I'd have ended up with like fifty quid, yeah, yeah, to sit there and wait for the lead actress to go, <coughs> you know, and then oh my god, <laughs> I'm on! I, I can't, I don't know how no. people do it. I do not know how people do it. And I had come off Coronation Street, so I got this really great agent, but there, you know, the the roles for it's it's an old old story as old as time. <laughs> that the, Parts for women in their forties, yeah. and then I was here comes they was coming fifty were just not there unless yeah. you were already very established. And I was at that time getting very knee deep in wanting to be a film director, and yeah. I was directing short films, and I was developing feature two feature films, one of which became actually happened, Widow's Walk, and you know it's you just want to work, and yeah. if the work isn't there you have to start following other things that you're passionate about, you know? So in 2022, they, and of course there's Instagram and I have a website and I have, you know, I'm very vocal about my projects because I want people to see my films now or to hire me to write things and direct things. So I probably was quite easy to find, but over COVID, the the first, what I call the first day of COVID, which was March, 20, 2020, March the 20th, I hopped on a plane from London to come and be here with my chat. That's another whole movie story. And so I had been here. I am here. And so they email. Again, I'm not impossible to find. They emailed me and said, you know, you have to, it's all cloak and dagger. You have to sign this NDA because God forbid yeah. you should mention something's happening and it hasn't happened yet. And um, I got on the ferry to Seattle and I, 
and uh, two miles away from Ron Gilbert, I recorded. <laughs> but they, we were in our, you know, we were older, we were married, and you know, it was it was clever not to still make us in our twenties. You know, yeah, we had matured. Yes, yes, I yeah. Think, I don't think my brush had matured much, but no, know. no, maybe not. Um, Just normal. I do, yeah. I think in return as well, it feels uh, her personality does seem. She seemed to have mellowed a lot. She's not as feisty. She's a bit more supportive. I mean, did you also notice that change a bit? Yes, and we talked about that. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. What What did you say? T- tell us more. Yeah. Well, again, I'm slightly bound by the yeah. lines. It's not like I'm improvising anything. No, 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 no. Good God, no, good God, no. <laughs> um, uh, because I mean, that's did you ever try? We we were you ever? No, no, not no. really. No. No, you know what the you know what the job is. Yeah. You know what yeah. the remit is for that. There are there are jobs where you can do that, and there are, you know you don't do it in Shakespeare and you don't do it in Monkey Island. Yeah. Apparently. So, um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I just I just went with it. When you're you know when you're hired to do a job, um, I think the best most successful actors just do as they're told. Yeah. And then they might bring something you hope they bring something of themselves. You know, I'm talking as a director now. You are you hope they bring something of themselves. Like example when I was casting the little boy in my uh ghost story in Widow's Walk, I was just completely I'd chosen this one little boy. He had these little wonky teeth and he had it was just this super little kid. But there was one thing that he had to do, which was this underwater sequence. And we and my underwater cameraman and uh, stunt coordinator said, said, you have to put them in the water because you cannot shoot on land for mm. three weeks. And then we get to the tank and they freak out. And this adorable child couldn't do it. He mm. just didn't have the swimming skills. He was very scared about going underwater. And the and Jamie, the boy who got the part, was uh, he was amazing. He was able to, and and he ended up being an amazing actor. He was always they, they were all good actors. Yeah, but yeah. I have, was, in my mind, it was was this other actor, but the actor who came through was not who I first imagined, and yeah. that's what. That, and I, I speak out, I shout out to all actors. It's like, it doesn't matter if you're not exactly what the breakdown says, exactly what they want, because you might just bring something that blows everything else out of the water or fits in in a more imaginative way. And that's very exciting for directors. So what did you discuss then in terms of uh, Elaine and her more mellow personality? What kind of things did you say? Well, that came from the director who had worked very closely with Ron and everyone. That had all sort of been decided. Like I said, I was hired to interpret the lines. And if I was like, slight, I was, I never got it wrong. No. Um, oh, listen to me. I never got it wrong. <laughs> no, no. Um, but it was, it, you know, it, and I'm sort of talking more about the semantics of an actor and director relationship. Is it the director's job is to sort of, they're the sculptor. Yeah. And you're the, you know, you're the, a piece of unmolded you know clay yeah and they go in and they they smooth out the edges and steer you over here or take you over there or sometimes they get lucky and the actor will come up with something fabulous and they go oh, well, we'll try that then yeah so I guess yeah it, it wasn't as if you you weren't doing it in a, a feisty way and then they were like no let's try and have it more mellow but it was just obviously that's what the lines lend themselves to don't they yeah yeah and remember uh there's there's very little preparation uh, as far as there's no rehearsal there's no you know we have time to discuss something we could go over time if we needed to but when you've been in the business 40 odd years (laughs) you get quick you get you start making quick decisions about things and like I said that character is is really quite close to who I am already and so it's not it's not a stretch to step back into Elaine's breaches. Yeah. How how do you feel about that character change? Did were you did that come as a surprise that she seemed a bit? Oh, more... I thought it was great because they could have just sort of rolled out the same. Yeah. Oh, no time has passed, and we're you know we're still rolling around, uh, you know, swashbuckling. I think it, I thought it was uh, yeah, I thought it was smart. Yeah, because also my voice has changed. Yeah. 
and my voice is different from what it was when I was 34 or whatever. Yeah. Um, now, Sea of Thieves. Um, t tell me a bit more about that. I feel you, you you wanted to mention something around that. So let's well, talk about that. I do because, and, and I want to say this without it sounding um, like, you know, sour grapes or anything, because it's not that. Let me preface the story with that. And it all was happening around the writer's strike and the actor's strike and the question, the big question mark of AI, okay? Yeah. And how actors potentially are being, there's the potential for them to be replaced quite easily, especially a voice. Anyway, so um, we did the 2022 version and then another email came to me saying, can you sign this NDA because there's another job? I'm like, oh, it's another job from this, you know, it's a, no, it's another Monkey Island job. I was like, great. What pro the problem came for me was that the money they offered was exactly what they had offered the time before and only twice what they'd offered before, which was scale. And I don't know if you if people understand that, but the unions create like, look, you can't hire this actor for less than yes. this amount of money. Okay. And often on low budget things, it's it's really good because it's a rule of thumb of like, look, well, let's start at this price. Yeah. And if it's low budget, everybody gets the same. It's called favored nations. Everybody gets nobody. There's no star here. We're all getting paid the same. So I was happy to get twice scale for the 2022 version. And then they wanted to pay me the exact same for, in less than a year, another go at it. And I went, hang on a minute. I have been doing this role. I created this role. Mm. I have been doing this role for going on 27 or something. It's been a long years. time now. Yeah, yeah. But yes. And you still and you have made millions and millions and millions of dollars for they don't even have to print a disc anymore people just download it for there's yeah. no yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no cost to them except hire a studio hire of actors and then post production and the animation i understand there's a great deal of work goes into it but to just come back to me and hire me as if i was being hired for the first or second time just really felt yes unfair and and remember in my in the back of my mind was the writers going do you know what we're writing these lines and you're making millions and millions of dollars on streamers millions billions of downloads yeah yeah, yeah. and we're not getting a, a, a cut and that's exactly when you bring it down to the macro and the micro that's how i felt i said and so they came back and they said well it's a fixed budget and everybody's getting paid the same i said i'm not concerned with the other actors yeah 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 um and I don't have an agent anymore to vouch for me. So I'm going to vouch for myself. Okay. And the answer was take it or leave it. Okay. Because because I had asked for not not a horrendous amount of money. Yeah. I asked for a nice chunk of money that made me feel okay about spending an entire taking me out of my forest. Yeah. I don't act anymore. I'm basically. Yes. Well, this I'm is the thing. Yeah. Retired. You're bringing me out of retirement to place me into a project that you will once again make a great deal of money from and you cannot express your appreciation for me any more than double scale plus 10 percent and is this is when how you does sound, how does that sound to you well i think i mean i can understand why you would want to sort of like you say vouch for yourself and that must have been quite difficult when you don't have someone going like an agent, like you say, between you uh, was this with was this with Lucas Lucas Arts or was this with no, 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 it was not Lucas Arts. Okay, no, here's here's what made it easy, and I go back to actors and ha the what the wonderful thing about actors and the thing that shoots them in their own foot. Yes, <laughs> is that they will do anything to yeah. perform. You know, yeah. The opens and they start tap dancing it's like and i've done that i've been that actor oh just give me a job oh my god i was good enough yeah to do your thing thank you so much thank you but i'm now not that actor anymore. yeah you're actually inconveniencing me to come and give my talent yeah to your show and not for one second did anybody in that production take that into consideration and i'm talking for all of us actors we've all done it forever yeah and you know 
the others weren't that bothered to just go in and do another. And I just made it sort of point of principle, to be honest. Yeah. And, and how do you feel about that now? Do you still feel that you, you're glad you, you didn't? Oh, without a doubt, because yeah. I couldn't have asked for the big chunk of money and then come back and gone, all right, then I didn't need yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do that. No. One. And here's the other thing. And I've experienced it with Titanic as well, because there are not just actors in um, Ship of Dreams, Titanic movie diaries. There's the fans. I was really captivated by by people, as I said, who are utterly passionate about that ship, the history, the film, Jack and Rose, everything. I am completely, I completely wanted to honor the fandom. Yeah. And what the producers, Disney don't give up. Yeah. Paramount. James Cameron, John Landau, they don't, what they miss the stitch and the Monkey Island producers don't consider the fans, the people who are putting money down to play their game. They do not consider that, and I'm sure it was not a huge problem, Alexandra Boyd's not playing Elaine. Oh, we'll just, so they said they didn't have the money to pay me, but they had to go and hire a casting director to pay somebody else. To get else. somebody else. And I did wonder how that, that would have worked. Yes, of course. Unless they had somebody in their back pocket. Yeah. But it's, it's as a producer now myself, Yeah. I find it really, I find it astonishing that there's this huge disconnect. Like the producers I'm talking about are about making money. Yeah. And yes. the actors who the fans connect to, the actors slash characters that the fans connect to, there's this huge gap. There's an abyss between the two of you, us. And I, I, don't, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. So on a, you know, and I know there was, um, there was another actress who did a similar thing. Um, her name is Helena Taylor. I know her friend of friends. She, and she was in a big show. She'd only do, done two games. Yeah. And she did a similar thing. And she posted something on Twitter um and and sort of got a bit of backlash by like what do you mean four thousand dollars that's an awful lot of money to us she said yes but not when you consider all i'm asking for is a cut of the millions yeah and yeah, yeah. Then she, wasn't, she wasn't asking it was like probably 0.1 percent of what what they were going to make it's very true yeah so in which case is that does that mean you know if they did other more more of this if that for example an, an Elaine spin-off or something what do you do you think would you still take part in in that well, or would, they, what they would know now is I, I doubt very much that would happen yeah that would be cute. it would be fun um but knowing that I won't work for double scale plus 10 yeah they they, I, they won't even consider it because it will be it will be it will cost too too much money for them yeah yeah so do you think um but as in, they, is there any, is there kind of bad blood between you now, do you think? Or would you? No, it was very polite. Yeah. No, it was that's very, good. there will be, you know, they say there'll be no, that will not affect us hiring you in the future. But remember, I'm retired. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> my pursuits are, and that's another thing. Actors are like, they are so desperate to people please and producer please and director please that to the, the, the horror mm. of not being invited back is like a specter across your entire career. It really is because actors, unless you're George Clooney or, or you know, Tom Cruise, who make their own stuff as well, P.S. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless you're that level, you, and remember, and notice two male actors came to mind, not Kate Blanchett or Kate Winslet. Yeah. Because they don't have the power in the same way as the male actors do, the A-list actors. That's a whole different world to the jobbing actors here and my jobbing actors that are in my documentary about Titanic. The, nobody considers them because they're just, oh, choose me, choose me. Oh, yeah. I'll do it again. Oh, but I can't piss anybody off because I might not get chosen again. And, and I'm at a, at a lovely point in my life where I have other exciting things to be putting my energy into and i sorry for all of the monkey island fans who are like oh she doesn't she doesn't care i i care i cared a year ago enough about myself yeah to honor my experience and my training and my intelligence and my all the things i know now and all the fun of it and they do not so much which and so as in 
I th- but you would still work with them if they ever gave you that opportunity. But as in, obviously, they would have to. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Match and course. yeah, because you know it's and it's not again. I'm I'm trying to frame the story without saying it's not about the money. Yeah. Or the amount of the money, it's the amount of connection they have to the craft. Yeah. And to what you bring. And Helena even says it in her videos. You know, so I've trained here. I trained at Lambda. I trained at this place. I have all of this experience. I'm not just showing up with going, you know, can I have a go? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're hired because you've been, you've been, you know, sifted through a whole bunch of actors 30 odd years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <it> was, <laughs> and I can't even remember. Was it 92, 93? I, I, it, it would. Was, well, for the first one, the cur- the curse one came out in 1997. So but I, you might have recorded it. I don't know if you recorded it the year before. No, I recorded it same same. So, year yeah, 99. Same as Titanic. Titanic. Yes. <laughs> yes that was um, yeah, is that, um, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I do get it. I do get I know, it. When you get to a point in your career... And, and your career is kind of similar, you know, you're, I, I, you know, whether you're freelance or working at an organization that could fire you at yeah. any point, you know, your, your career is creative, you have to use your brain, you will find out that, you know, in 10 years time, you are 10 times the, the writer and the journalist that you are now. That's just fact, yeah. because of your life experience, you can't give life experience to you know, every so often you'll get a Timothy Chalamet or somebody, somebody who who has this beautiful essence about them. But it's so rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so rare. And as you get older, your priorities change based on your life experience and your professional experience. And that's why as a director, I know I bring so much to a story. I'm not a technical director. I am not, I don't know anything about cameras. I, you know, they frighten the life out of me, but I have, (laughs) I'll choose a brilliant DP cinematographer who will create those frames and those shots for me. So I can concentrate on the actors and the story and the way, you know, and the feel and the tone of the film. And that's what excites me now. Well, let's talk a bit about that. Let's talk about uh, a sort of ship of dreams. And by the way, feel free. I know some people's uh, sort of uh, commenting as well. So feel free to, if you've got questions as well, chat them in the chat. But can let's I see them. Where can I see the chat? Where? Can oh, I, I can. Um, if I, I could maybe drop you the link if you wanted of, of the thing. But uh, you'd probably you would need to have a Twitch account, I guess. So, but I could probably. I don't, yeah, I'm not on Twitch. Um, just read read them out. Yes, I'll read them out. Let's not move on from Monkey Island if people have some questions. Yes, well, we've got a question in here from someone called uh, Lestat who says, "What do you think about the the humor style of the games?" I'm guessing you 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 enjoy that, but yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, because I know a lot of those games are all like war games and shoot 'em up and Vikings and you know army. That must have felt quite fun to be yeah. part of i imagine yeah but i've always i've always really only done the fun ones I've, I've only ever been cast in the fun ones really yeah i think once i was i didn't get the job but i was asked to have you been yeah. in any other video games yeah i was a i was a bug in a thing about a uh, thumbelina i was a little bug and um but that was excuse me that wasn't a computer game that was an animated oh feature. was it right yeah, and yeah, yeah. also um krusky sloop scupio i can never say their name the um oh god what was it about the family who lived in a in a sort of motorhome and went around africa okay oh yeah, the wild thorn breeze yes, wild thorn- oh yes <laughs> I do these things like they're an afternoon of my life. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> and, and so I have to, and I've been going so long, I can't remember everything. Yeah, Wild Thornberries, I did that. That was fun because it was a feature film and a cinema and everything. We got to, yeah, and yeah. Again, had red hair and little freckles. This <laughs> and then it was Victoria, and she was very posh, and she was at a posh private school. And she was very interested in things. Yeah. Amazing. I didn't realise you were in the Wild Thornberries. Uh, that's great. Well, actually, you'd have to dig a bit to find it. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a great, it's a great, uh, it's a great show though. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, if, if, if there is any other questions, things like that, p- p- please keep dropping because I can just ask, I can ask away. Um but I, I do want to to know a little bit. Thank you for letting me watch uh, Ship of Dreams. Um, I, I guess if people don't know 
sort of what what that's about and your connection to it um t- tell us now tell us a bit more about it absolutely as we are taking ourselves back to 1996 yes yeah i hadn't been i hadn't been in los angeles very long at all i didn't have an agent uh or a manager or anything but my friend was working in a manager's office and he he called me he said they're looking for english actors to go on this project about titanic that james cameron is making and i was aware of james cameron i loved the abyss uh, you know, and the second alien movie, and I, my, but my partner at the time was like, oh, James Cameron, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So um, I wrote to the casting director. Matt gave me the telephone number and the address of who, Mally Finn, and they were really casting the net very wide. Um, and they really were looking for local Brits to be in it. And not just, you know, you had to have a look, you had to have a look like you right. were this. And I did, you know, I, look very good in the, in the gauzy in the hair. And um, I auditioned for The Countess of Roths, which was a part with no lines. And at the time I was, I was going to agents interviewing, like, please represent me. I said, look, I've got, I'm going in for this Titanic project. And this one agent goes, he looks it up on the breakdown because they all know what's, what's out there. Well, this is a, it's a part with no lines. Why would you want that job? I was like, I don't know. I just got here. I'd like any job. Thank you very much. (laughs) It's catering, you know, doing doing a typical actor's day job. Anyway, so there was no line. So I go in and Mally Finn says, okay, come back next week and either come back with another actor and you can improvise a scene, which I now know is a very, uh, it was a very unusual thing, but it was a very typical thing that she would do. Um, or write something. I was like, write something. I can't. I haven't written anything since school. So I had a friend help me, and um, I did a ton of research. I watched a night to remember it. Anyway, I go in, I record it, and um, I didn't get the part. Went to my friend Rochelle, who is a very, very good friend of mine now. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh well, oh, that's a bummer. And um, and then about three weeks goes by, and my pager goes off. And um, I got a call to say, uh, James Cameron saw your audition and he's going to give you another part. Amazing. Apparently he said, yeah, we've sewn up Countess of Ross, but get her, get her something else, which was a real compliment. And I, you know, I filmed, I was there for two months and filmed sort of a number of scenes that were cut, but one very significant to the fans who know is when um, Jack and Rose and Molly Brown are coming, waltzing into the first class dining room. And I get to look at yes. Jack and the piece of direction from Jim was look at him like, hmm, haven't seen anything like that in first class before. <laughs> um, which all comes across in one look, of course. Of course, yes, like, yes, yes. Yes. Um, and n- now I'm the uh, eyebrow lady. Or as <laughs> some people, some people in their mind, they think I wink at him. I do not wink. <laughs> I think about winking, but I use my eyebrow. And and so um, fast forward 25 years later, and it's won all these, uh, won all these, well, no, fast forward to the Oscars, and it wins all the Oscars, and I'm still in touch with these actors because we just spent so much time together or on set and off set or in the dressing rooms or in the bar of the Real Del Mar drinking margaritas in Mexico. And um, I think it was Rochelle who said, you know, we should sort of write down this experience we've had because it's quite unique. And, you know, we're like the munchkins in The Wizard of Oz if we had first person account. So I... I badgered everybody to write down their experiences. There were 28 of us. I have 28 diaries. Wow. And we tried to get it published and nobody wanted, no, it was no, literally that ship had sailed in 1990. <laughs> and I still have all these diaries. So two or three years ago, I could see the 25 year anniversary coming around. And I'm now a filmmaker. I've made my first feature film, which is a narrative, a ghost story, Widow's Walk, which you've heard me talk about. Yeah. And um, and I'm working with this producer. I was like, Nick, I've got these diaries. There's got to be some value in sitting the actors down and having them read. For, and for the first time, I kept them back from them. They weren't allowed to read them until we rolled the cameras. 
and all these memories come flooding back and then because of the joys of instagram and all of that i also had connected with dale who makes these miniature yes. barbie size reproductions of kate winston's costumes and ilka who makes full size sequin by sequin beads amazing by glass yeah. beads. i mean they're museum quality reproductions yes it's astonishing and then gorgeous zach in australia who has an entire room with all of his props and costumes it now that, that i don't know if you saw that a couple of weeks ago there was a sale of props and costumes yes that hollywood um uh the um not the um hard rock cafe but like, like some somebody had a huge collection of props yes. and the, the the piece of board it's not a door yes the piece of um, paneling that she floats on went for seven hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Wow! So I wanted to combine that um, that give voice to the actors yeah. who were never asked, and combine the question of why this film captivates people—people people who weren't even born when we shot the film. Yeah, or young people when they see the film for the first time. Um, and I haven't really answered that question, but I, and I'm not bothered by it actually anymore that it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's something that is so hugely significant to that community and, you know, April the 15th, here comes the anniversary again yeah, and people yeah. together and they talk about it and they remember, and then it's all filtered through for the most part. There's a, there's a faction of people who hate the film who cares and then there's and then there's this other group of people who filtered through i call titanic james cameron's titanic is the gateway drug to being obsessed with the entire story and history but how fantastic yeah how fantastic to memorialize those people who lost their lives and and the laws that were changed the the seafaring laws you know that now we have enough lifeboats on every ship and now you know all sorts of laws that were changed because of that disaster I think in in that film as well, I think Linda Kern says something about being disturbed by the truth of the story, which I thought was a great line. And did you feel that while, while whilst uh, being on on set and, and playing? Obviously, I think uh, uh, was it was it a fictional character you played, or was it uh, was yeah. it? But you yeah. must have still was... felt that kind of strangeness, closeness to the story. Uh, I'll I'll tell you this because I didn't do any of the lifeboat scenes. Yes, um, I. I might have done, but things changed sort of halfway through. So I, I, I was, I didn't get to do that. But um, because of the attention to detail to the set, where you couldn't, you know, I talk about that, you just couldn't see the edges. So there was no acting required. You absolutely felt like because of the way we were dressed every time you came onto set jim would take your gloved hand and kiss the back of your hand because everybody just all the men turned into the you know edwardian gentlemen and all of us just allowed them to fawn all over <laughs> the 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 bigger picture of you know women corseted and strapped into their lives is played out in rose's story but um there was you just couldn't imagine that that wasn't exactly where you were. There was one moment when um, when they wanted to get the shot, uh, they, they pass my me and they go through into the dining room and I'm now sat at the captain's table and they're going over to the table, the big table where everybody has the, the you know, their dinner. And um, there was this beautiful moment where every single person was an Edwardian Titanic passenger or steward, except for Jim, who was not James Cameron, but an, uh, Jim, I can't think of his surname now, but he was the steady cam operator yeah. and his cable wrangler were the uh, in their cargo pants and T-shirt. <laughs> They were the only. I'm like, what are they doing here? They, should, they because it was so. You know, they always missed it a bit. They put a bit of smoke, so it gives it this lovely hue. It was so sur beyond surreal. Mm. So going back to Linda, who on you know, and and the two core extras, Judy and Ellen, who spent days and days in that tank, uh, reenacting the 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 ebbing away of people's lives in 28 degree water. There was no way, they say quite succinctly, there was no way you couldn't be affected by the truth of the story yeah. and how, and how, again, it's, when you're, when you're doing a play, there's a conceit that, you know, there are actors on a stage and everyone over here is the audience and we're, we're creating 
we're creating a story out of nothing and and that's why theater can be so creative right and but with a movie a good movie is trying as hard as it can to recreate reality yeah in in a manufactured way if that even sounds you know if that even sounds like an oxymoron and so when you were working with 200 million dollars which had never been done before in 1996 and that money was just evap it wasn't evaporating it was going into sets and costumes and and everything and the time taken and all of that stuff it's you come away with you know for me the the most the most exciting part of the film is once the iceberg is struck and you know mm. you're on countdown yeah. to that that boat sinking under the under the surface of the water and it's every frame of it is extraordinary yeah. i don't know if you've heard um the podcast of Brittany and ethan who are also featured in my documentary they are going through that film scene by scene yeah and is... there's so much to talk about i've been on the podcast twice because yeah. we just sit there and we just talk and talk and talk about the detail and the script and what james cameron said in the you know in the director's commentary and what the outcome is and and, and you know Brittany is so close to the story and how it affected her as a child and still does you know she's done a phd in yeah. james cameron's titanic it's it's really quite extraordinary and i am so proud to be that even playing that tiny tiny part yeah and here i am 26 years later still talking about it. yeah it's i mean w what was it like working with james cameron then he has a reputation in Hollywood for being a bear, yeah. like being a bit of a screamer and all of that stuff. And he certainly um, has admitted himself that he used to be like that. And he's learned that you get more flies with honey than vinegar now. So he's less like that. So I, I can't talk about, I can't talk about what he's like now. Yeah. But he was absolutely, utterly charming to actors. All of us. He, he felt there was a sort of appreciation that, um, Somebody said, well, he can do everything else. He can camera operate. He can do the lighting. He even edits. He does. He wrote it. He, he even did the drawings. You know, Jack's drawings are all. He, he's an incredible artist and an auteur, but he's not an actor. Yeah. So he was always, always charming to us, uh, except maybe Leo. He would have teased him a bit because <laughs> Leo was a bit of a brat. I just <laughs> love, I just love knowing what a brat he was on Titanic. And then seeing something like The Revenant or The Wolf of Wall Street, which is, he's so brilliant in mm. those films. He is an amazing actor. Yeah, yeah. And you, I never, I never saw that in 1990. <laughs> he was terrible. He, he wasn't terrible. He was just misbehaved. He was very Was cool. he? Did he misbehave? Yes. Was he very mischievous? Yes. Fart noises before the takes. <laughs> Didn't know his lines. That's amazing. Lines, really. <laughs> and then Kate was, you know, she had her three ring binder and her script was all in there and her copious notes. And, you know, it, the difference was tangible. Well, that's hilarious. That's so fair. And the, but that kind of works with both the characters, though. Yeah. That really yeah, yeah. works. They were cast very well. Yeah. Uh, that's it. I mean, and t t tell us a bit more about the set as well, because you know, just just seeing it in 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 your film, it, you know, the extent that they went to recreate everything, it must be a, amazing. Like walking on it each day. It was well. I I tell the story about how they forgot me the first day. And yes. I was there and, there and, the, and the dressing rooms and makeup and hair had gone really quiet, and you and you don't question any of this stuff you're literally you're sucked into the machine you do as you're told if you can you know especially something of that size and so that that set was built in a tank that had a three-story set in it so if you think of the the main staircase where the um where the clock is yes it was that level and then there was a the next level down which was the, the staircase i walked up and down for 18 hours and then there was another level below that Amazing. and it was all in a tank the set was on hydraulics so that when they flooded it and they tipped it it really was them going waist deep through the dining room that a week before we had been filming all those amazing dining rooms wow scenes. so i was you know i was the uh, they, they came to get 
me, Joaquin came to get me and literally lead me down the spiral staircase and into, but everybody was up the other end. So I was sort of like, I was sort of brought in and everyone was like, who is this person? You know, <laughs> and I was, it's, it's, it was a little bit of shock. Like yeah. how nothing prepared you or me for that for walking through a dining room that had every place setting, every lamp, every table and chair and white linen tablecloth. I mean, you, you never, no, I, <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, just so you know, they've recreated the entire yeah. three stories of Titanic just to prepare you. Nobody's thinking about that. No, nobody's thinking about, you know, and, and so when, you know, when they're saying action, you're just sort of, you, you and like I said, no acting required because it was so detailed. Yeah. It was so detailed. Yeah. Um, and how long did you how long were you filming for? How long I was there, I wasn't filming every day, yeah, but I was there for at least two months. I, I've lost count, I've lost track now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but they would um you'd get a four AM call. Right, four AM. Yeah. Well, uh Kate was three AM. They okay. started her earlier. Poor girl. Wow. She, she it was it was amazing. And um we get a 4 a.m. call, get all togged, and then you'd sit in your corset, which you can't sit in because it's like a it's like a straight jacket. Um, and then it'd be 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and they'd be like, right, you're wrapped, we don't need you after all, and you just get all your kit off and go back to the hotel. Yeah. So there were times when they just had you ready just in case they needed you, you know. I see, yeah. And then but they they have you already and you're just having to sit in your corset and Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. that they must have been difficult like, they didn't sometimes. Turn around, they didn't turn around to where you were or they, you know, whatever it was. And uh oh my gosh, it was it was brilliant though. Yeah. And 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 those people in my documentary, I've been in touch with them and you stayed in touch with them all this time you get you get quite close during a job like that yeah unlike other jobs that are less significant we're all connected you know my favorite favorite part of my documentary is um rebecca mother at stern who said we all knew we would never experience anything like this again yeah and she and she wrote that in her diary 26 years ago wow and She's absolutely right. Um, and tell us what's what's happening with the, the the film now because it was it was on Vimeo, I believe, and then obviously it's 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 not unless yes. Well, we did it a year ago. Yeah. We did a little experiment because again, I'm speaking to all the independent filmmakers out there. It's really hard to get an independent film. I can up imagine. And out there. I can imagine. And we thought, well, this is Titanic. We're going to have you know, we're going to just be inundated. We hope Vimeo can does we don't break Vimeo. <laughs> so, <laughs> You know, for the anniversary, I had to do a little sort of press release and get some reviews. You're trying any way you can. You know, we put some money into Facebook ads because yeah. a lot of the Titanic fans live in, in the face and the Titanic groups live on Facebook. But we barely made two hundred dollars in yeah. downloads. It was two ninety nine to watch this film. Yeah. And I'm telling you, here's my theory, because, again, I'm talking now from the other side of the acting world. Yes. Where I'm a producer and a director. What I realized, what we learned was that people won't even now spend two ninety nine to rent a movie mm. when they can watch every movie in the world for six ninety nine a month or ten nine whatever Hulu or sure. Netflix because it feels like it's free. Yeah, right. I can just scroll through and what do I feel like watching today? I'm looking at my television. I'm yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> what do I feel like watching today? Oh, I have to pay to see. Oh, I love Titanic, but I don't. It was it was a real lesson yeah. learned in like okay fine and actually what's happened is um, we got we premiered in Los Angeles last August amazing and through, yes through that film festival we uh, we were found by a really great sales agent who has now sold us to Canada we're going to do some events in Canada that all yet has to be TBD'd as they say and um, US we yeah. have sold to and South Korea. Um, and what will happen is they will go to Cannes with us, which is a big film market. We've already been to Berlin and they'll go to Cannes and we will roll out this year. It's sometimes in theatres, but it's quite expensive to do a cinema release, but it will be on the streamers and you okay. might be lucky enough already 
already be a subscriber to that streamer or you still may have to you know like yeah. amazon prime you you know amazon you have to there are a lot of rental well rental yeah there. so yeah. We'll, we'll, there'll be a big push this summer all oh, right um, okay yeah yeah because we yeah we have people to pay back yeah <laughs> yeah maybe it's just stuff like that <laughs> and I, i'm interested though like obviously we're talking about monkey i'll be talking about titanic and like you said, they they both have this really avid fan base. So I, I'm sort of interested to know what kind of like memorable interactions you've had with with either of them. Really, obviously, you do get to meet some of them for, for your film that you've you've made. Yes, but, yeah. yes, and and even uh, having the tiniest part yeah. is a is a joy to uh, the people who meet me. Which, like I said, is a little bit. It just, I cannot say it feels redundant or silly because it's not because I now know these people quite well. They're either in my film or they come to, they still come to me through, through um, Instagram mostly. Um, and the, the point is, um, it's just, it's just lovely. And, and why would I, why would I um, not respond yeah. to somebody who is, is is so interested and so excited about a particular thing um Completely. And, and you know now that i'm not um a self-aggrandizing actor i'm a self-aggrandizing director yeah I, I feel i have actually far more to um contribute to the fandom if you like yes because i'm, I'm coming to it from a from a different place yeah well, I mean, and there was a, there was a lovely moment. Sorry, there was a lovely no, moment when we were filming at the Royal Albert Hall. They often, every so often, they'll do a live performance. The Philharmonic will play the entire yeah. the entire score and put the movie up. So you know, you get people. And I was like, oh, there's going to be tons of fans there. There's going to be tons of you know real Titaniacs. And really, there were only my two guys, and then these other guys that had come over from uh, Holland. But he had he had an inkling that I was going to be there and printed up photos that i have posted on the internet for me to sign amazing i'm like what <laughs> and, and even you know when my dp says you know because um, th that he couldn't believe he was in a room with people who had been in his favorite movie of all time so i had to put him in a documentary and i say but we're not movie stars he said but you are no we're not movie stars yeah i know the difference <laughs> but it wasn't it doesn't matter, and I'm I'm happy not to be a movie star. I, I it's it, it it doesn't matter. You we were part of something extraordinary, that is evergreen and perennial. Monkey Island, you know, just by virtue of the fact that they're still delving back into it and and reimagining those characters, it's it's. It's the you know it's and 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 everything is so much more accessible because of the world we live in now yeah because yeah social media. social media has some really awful parts to it but it has some amazing parts to it that's how I mean when you sat down to say how am I going to find Alexandra what did you do you just googled me I right? did yeah <laughs> found and your Twitter and found I your get, website I get, a whole page. I get a whole page between the bits I've done and my films it's it's and and I don't understand people who would. Uh, who would cl closet themselves away from that? Then other, pick another job. Mm, Why are you yeah. doing it then? Yeah. And I guess you, you were talking a little bit earlier about AI and I'm, I'm sure you've got, uh, you know, this is this is kind of all any everyone's talking about now. Um, and I know obviously... Well, that, was, that was my first thought when I turned down the uh, the last Monkey Island job. Yeah. I Did you... Yeah. I hung up phone not hung up the phone but yeah. sent the email to say cheers thanks a lot no thanks yeah and then I went oh well they can just AI my voice yes years of I think there would have been an uproar if they'd done that well I I contacted Screen Actors Guild and now they are I said look it's a bit late in the game I know that you're ha you haven't done this already and that, that again that was part of the actor strike but there's a voiceover a gaming uh question it's a different contract and they said, well, let us know if it's not your voice. Um, and they've given a, a credit to an actress, and I'm hoping she's a real person. They haven't just made her up. But but again, you know, um, what am I going to do? There's yeah. no jurisdiction at the moment. And that's what scares the actors. That's what they, you know, forget being replaced with something that you've already done, which is easy peasy for them. Um, it's the just creating whole new product 
and um, productions and projects without actors at all, which I don't think will it won't hold up for very long. No. It'll hold up for a bit. And then, I mean, all this stuff with uh, Kate Middleton and that 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 video they put out, I, I, I think it's AI. I don't think it's her. I, I you know, I, I don't want to delve too much into the conspiracy <laughs> theories, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, that, it, that video is decidedly, distinctly unnatural and unreal. So somebody's either messed up and lit it oddly and put a green screen behind sure it. yeah yeah or it's ai yeah <laughs> like, you know it's it's like it's one of two things have you put have you i, I suppose it's it's different now as 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 a director but i i mean have you put any kind of i suppose you you've mentioned there i was just gonna you know ask it as a fail safe so what what can you do really to stop uh a, ai from from nothing no nothing. yeah because it's so easy. I mean, have you used chat GPT? Yes, now? a little bit, yeah. I've used it. Yeah. Yeah. I've used it because it helps me rethink what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like especially for a log line for a movie. I always ask, what's the log line? What's the elevator pitch? What's this? What's that? You know, they want to know what it is, but like that. And if I put it into chat GPT, it's a bit wonky. It's a bit yes overblown <laughs> yeah but i'd rather it be overblown because now i can re-edit it to what i want it to be and uh the the well the genie's well out of the bottle so you've got to say right um what's it what, what's going to happen um and you can't go back so we have to embrace it and use it wisely but there are going to be people who won't yeah and they're not they're already not what advice would you give uh to anyone sort of starting out in this industry and, and particularly women I, I i i guess because it's it, as you know we were talking about before i came on air a little bit about this you know just even female directors it's quite it's still you know well not rare my, because they exist, but they're not getting yeah. perhaps the same accolades yeah. or attention, maybe. Or, or, no, it's opportunity. Yeah. It's opportunity. Yeah. Because um, I've already, in a very subtle way, been passed over for uh, male directors who have 30 years of directing. I have 30 odd years of acting, but not directing. Yeah. And I haven't worked with robert de niro who i could bring to the project and i haven't worked with this person who i could bring to the project so there's a there's a conversation about me being the director until it's not because there there's money involved and there's experience and there's talent involved talent as in actors yeah so that will happen so i can't roll back the time and have 30 years of directing under my belt that's just a fact yeah so the opportunities are being curtailed for me because because of that, not because of my ability. And you know, there's a lot riding on the money and this and that and the other. There were there are other factors too, but that's kind of the the kernel of it. And my reaction to that is I've started a nonprofit called Artemisia's Daughters, and it's about uh, Google Artemisia Gentileschi because it's based on in part on her story. She was a Baroque female painter whose work is still 500 years later still mistaken for Caravaggio right. and her male counterparts so Artemisia's daughters we're all standing on her shoulders and all of the shoulders of the women who have hustled their way to a position of creativity and so we make movies and we're tr creating workshops for young women, giving them a camera, you know, using your phone, you, you know, just come and be and just see that this is a, these are there are jobs in the film industry that you can do. Yeah. And not just acting and not just makeup and hair and wardrobe. Anyway, so that's my part of it. But the other part is that we have a long way to go before there's parity in opportunity. I'm working on a television show that I've written. I've written the pilot and I'm working with a female uh, producer in the UK. And one of our first meetings after she read the script, which she really likes, that's great. She said, we're going to have all female directors. This is going to be a female led, female created, female, male, you know, many, the, the, the main three characters are women in a man's world. Uh -huh. And we will have female directors. So because I can't 
keep subscribing to the fact that like oh well Alexandra can't be a showrunner because she's never been a showrunner on, yeah. on a TV series before well why hasn't she because yeah I haven't had an opportunity she said you opportunity is what has to be there and then and and, and allowing us to fail a little bit as mm. well and the thing is that when you're talking about a million pounds an episode for something, they're not going to let you fail. They're going to surround you with the best cinematographer, the best costume designers, the best actors, because nobody wants to fail. Yeah. And, and you know, it's that's what's changing ever so slightly is being given the opportunities. And, of course, what it also boils down to, you, your question was, what would you say to somebody mm. who's starting? out is that you have to make your own opportunities yes yeah i i taught myself to write because i couldn't be bothered to negotiate with with writers who wouldn't cut this character or make it more budget friendly so i just wrote it myself yeah failed a bit maybe but not that badly widow's walk i am very proud of widow's walk every frame of it every scene every actor everything we did it's quite spectacular for a low low budget supernatural thriller and then i you know i when i started directing i didn't go to film school but i realized i'd been at film school i've been at film school my entire career yes yeah from when i was acting at drama school doing shakespeare and Chekhov and and all the stuff and then soap opera acting and then james cameron you know epic movie acting and everything i've it's all here yeah 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 i'm just driving on the other side of the road right yeah <laughs> but i'm having to make <laughs> that's all right because i do that here now yeah i'm having to make my own opportunities if mm. you sit around waiting for other people you can go you can get very old very quickly mm. worrying about why you're not being chosen and why they are what uh well i suppose i was i was going to well no you you can't answer that question actually that i was going to ask but um if people do want to see uh ship of dreams anywhere uh, th this year you, is it streaming services going to be the best way to go you said there's some festivals as well we, and if they want to check out more about you or just let us know yeah, where people my, can my website is alexandrabroid.co.uk yes i'll put that in the thing my... as well Instagram is the best place that I'm not t a terribly prolific Instagrammer because sure. we have a podcast. We have a Titanic talk podcast where we have yes. actors in the film and historians and authors and, and explorers. And we just, anybody wants to come on and talk about Titanic and trust me, there are many people, yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, broad and wide. It's, it's, it's not just about my movie or, or Titanic James Cameron's Titanic. It's, it's become greater than the sum of its parts that's on instagram which is titanic underscore talk underscore podcast okay my my handle is a contraction of first class woman which is my character in titanic my 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 titanic my instagram got got you know ditched you know so all of a sudden they they stop you sometimes for no oh right okay i see right right right. Your handle and start all over again it's first class woman so it's but you take out all the the vowels so it's f s t c l s s w m n first Got class you. woman so i put all my stuff there, up there and um ship of dreams film.com if you subscribe there it you'll get all the first notices about when and where and it'll be this summer we're Great. hoping this summer autumn we will be fully fledged and out there in the documentary well what we should be is right next to the menu with titanic because what happens is people watch the documentary and you kind of sure. touched on it and then they're like i need to watch the movie again now yeah 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 <laughs> i think i will i will rewatch it now after yes, yeah you, you'll see it with a whole new yeah. way because you'll now be spotting you'll be looking for i will action. i will yeah um and you know we basically made a 93 minute commercial for titanic you're welcome <laughs> <Tim>. <laughs> Oh, but it is really good. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad uh, more people are going to get to see it uh, later. I think it's moving. I think yeah. it's really touching to see the, the fans. And anybody who's a fan of anything will will connect to that, I think. Yeah. And then, as I said, if you're an actor or a filmmaker, it's a sort of must watch. You know, my my dream is that it, it will be part of film school curriculums and, and acting, acting school curriculums. Like this 
yeah, one of you here might become a, a successful household name actor. Yeah. But the rest of you, if you're lucky, will be this kind of jobbing actor. And 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 you'll be you'll be wanting to work all the time. And and if you get to work on a project like that, it's going to be quite wonderful. And and here's an example of that. I think it's it's an educational film as well. It is not just about, like you said, about the industry as well as as the film itself, and just like peeling back uh, how it all works. Um, but yeah, thank thank you so much for having a chat with me about that, and obviously about Monkey Island as well. Um, I'm glad to hear that you know, if if something ever came up again with Monkey Island, you, you would you know that it, there's a potential that it could still happen. It's not Ooh, without yeah. a doubt. Maybe <laughs> maybe you need to start a, a, a mailing campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, of course, of yeah. course, of course, of course. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Alexandra. I really appreciate uh, you spending well, some time with us. I'll put all the, me. I'll put all the links and everything uh, in, in with this video, uh, so everyone can go check it out themselves. But uh, anything else you want to say before we say farewell? <laughs> no, I just, I just feel like I hope to see you again down the road. You know, as these moments resurge, like I said, there's been a Monkey Island yeah. resurgence, there's been a Titanic resurgence, but also we have to look to the future. Yeah. Like I said, my, you know, what's actually taking up my creative brain space right now is Fighting Chance, which is my television show. Right. So, but, you know, then maybe we'll come back and talk about that. And yeah. All the women in that, and that will be. I'd a love to. Thing. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. I look I look forward to it. Thank you so much again, Alexandra. <laughs>